The hunt is on for Diddy, and leading the pack is none other than 50 Cent Diddy, now a recluse, is reeling from a barrage of accusations thrown his way. From the explosive lawsuit by Cassie to former allies exposing his shady dealings, it's been a PR disaster for the rap titan. Yet, what's less known is Fifth's early hunch about Diddy's hidden misdeeds. In 2010, Fifth dropped bombshells about Diddy's mistreatment of Cassie in an interview, but at the time, it barely made a ripple. Fast forward to now, the tables have turned. Diddy's once unshakable industry status is wobbling, with 50 set at the forefront, potentially steering Diddy towards a prison jumpsuit. What damning evidence has Fifth unearthed, and could it really imprison Diddy? Let's dive in. Puffy's like a, wow. What did he say? Describing Puffy in a single word? A, the animosity between Fifth and Diddy runs deep. For ages, Fifth has been smearing Diddy's name, trying to topple him. Apart from branding Diddy as gay, he's also targeted him over his lavish bashes. All seemed futile until Cassie's bombshell lawsuit in late 2023. She unleashed a wave of allegations, from prolonged physical abuse to being coerced with male escorts, revealing harrowing details. Though Cassie's legal battle ended with a hefty $30 million settlement outside court, it triggered an avalanche. Fans meticulously scrutinized Diddy's every online move, turning a once amusing video of Diddy scolding a blanketed Cassie into something sinister. What now? Got nothing to say, do you? However, 50 wasn't caught off guard. He had sensed Diddy's abusive streak long ago. Flashback to 2010, Fifth, attempting to expose the truth about their relationship, was dismissed as a bitter adversary. In a tell-all with DJ who kid on Shade 45, 50 disclosed receiving explicit images of Cassie. Stunned, he confronted Diddy for an explanation. You sent me those photos, like, explicit ones of your girl. Not what everyone else has seen. These are far worse. Can you believe it? I mean, we're talking about graphic, intimate photos, and... No, just no. Diddy, however, flipped the script, interrogating Fifth about the photo's origin. But Fifth was clueless. A nagging suspicion lingered, though I even called him out. Are you serious about this girl? Do you actually care about her? And he's like, yeah, she's my girl. So, I was like, okay, then check this out and call me back. I sent him the photos and everything. And he calls back, saying, Yo, thanks, man. Really appreciate it. How'd you get these? It hit Fifth and the sender aimed for these images to go public, leveraging Fifth's rivalry with Diddy as the perfect catalyst. Once buried in obscurity, that interview with Fifth surged back into the limelight after Cassie's lawsuit, compelling everyone to heed Fifth's earlier cautionary tales. With the sordid details now laid bare, it's unmistakable Diddy was behind those photographs. Cassie's legal filings paint a disturbing portrait, Diddy, or Brother Love as he's known, allegedly orchestrated forced liaisons with male escorts for Cassie, drugging them and her, and filming these dark episodes, all while indulging himself in the shadows. Such grave allegations sketch a disturbing panorama of Diddy's conduct, casting long shadows over his actions and their profound impact. The likelihood of Diddy using these images for blackmail is high it perhaps explains Cassie's prolonged entanglement with him. Even more unsettling is the hindsight perspective on Diddy's offer of a decade-long music contract to Cassie, likely a ploy to ensnare her in a vicious cycle of exploitation. IT makes you wonder, doesn't it? What if her aspirations as an artist, her belief in her talent, and Diddy's perception of her beauty were just facades? Facades masking his true intent to date her, ultimately confining her as his girlfriend. It's a pattern, a repetitive, painful pattern. Doubters of Cassie and 50's revelations should note, this isn't Diddy's first scandalous rodeo. His history is littered with similar stories involving numerous women. The aftermath of Cassie's lawsuit saw Jane Doe bravely stepping forward, accusing Diddy of drugging and assaulting her during her college days. Their paths crossed professionally in music videos, but a sinister turn unfolded in January 1991. While vacationing in New York, Jane reluctantly dined with Diddy at Harlem's Wells Restaurant. The evening took a dark turn as Diddy coerced her to his studio, where she realized too late that her drink had been spiked. Incapacitated, she was taken to Diddy's residence, where he assaulted her and recorded the vile act. 
Haunted by fear, Jane chose silence over seeking medical or legal help. She remained unaware of the recorded assault until Devante Swing of Jodeci shockingly informed her of the studio staff witnessing her assault on tape. Swing's revelation of everyone having seen the tape underscored the widespread knowledge of the incident. Despite being a potential witness, Swing, like many, remained silent, fearing the repercussions on his career. This dramatic chain of events led Jane Doe to a dark place hospitalization for severe depression, college dropout, and eventually a departure from the music industry. Haunted by her past, Jane was compelled to revisit her nightmares due to Cassie's lawsuit. Skeptics doubting Jane Doe's intentions should heed the words of Mark Curry regarding Diddy's manipulative tactics in the club scene, we'd see these moat bottles. Some were regular, but others... They had something else, something to make the girls lose control. We were warned, don't touch those, only drink these. It was an unspoken rule, a sinister drill we all knew but never questioned. You just stayed clear of those bottles. This harrowing tale is a window into the dark, manipulative world Diddy navigated, casting a long shadow over his legacy. In the club's throbbing heart, the scene unfolded like a twisted ballet. Girls, dazed and disoriented, flitted around, their mouths agape like fledglings in a nest. There, amidst the chaos, was Diddy, orchestrating the madness, a pill-popper maestro in a macabre dance. Pill after pill, he dispensed his control, his power, his dominance. In a candid expose, a former Bad Boy Records artist laid bare the sinister machinations behind Diddy's public persona. Mark's revelations painted a picture of debauchery and exploitation, with Diddy as the puppet master. Picture this, Mark recounted, you're at Puff's door, and there he is, as bare as the day he was born, nonchalantly inviting you in as if it's the most natural thing in the world. A surreal, disturbing invitation to Diddy's world. Mark even drew parallels between Diddy and Irv Kelly, hinting at a sinister pattern yet to be fully unveiled. It's like 50 said, Mark mused, when Diddy quickly settled with Cassie, it was like chum in shark-infested waters. Suddenly, all the silenced voices, every woman Diddy ever wronged, started emerging from the shadows. The litany of Diddy's alleged transgressions is long and sordid. I've seen it all. A source close to him revealed the power plays in his relationships, the aggression, not just with Kim, but with all his partners. Among those who dared to speak out is Gina Hugh, Diddy's ex, who accused him of brutal physical abuse and forcing her to abort their child. He was relentless, Gina recalled, stomping on my stomach, leaving me gasping for air, pleading for him to stop. Not everyone, however, managed to escape Diddy's gravitational pull. Kim Porter's story stands as a grim testament to the perils of orbiting too close to Diddy. I, in the end, a source remarked, being close to him is like a death sentence. He drains you, just like he did with everyone else around him. Despite reports attributing Kim's death to pneumonia, skeptics like Jaguar Wright harbor doubts, suspecting more sinister forces at play. They said pneumonia, but there were whispers of foul play, of toxins, of a life taken too soon, Wright alleged. Jean Deal, Diddy's former bodyguard, corroborates the chilling pattern. It's all connected, Deal asserted Doc Cassie's ordeal mirrors Kim's. The abuse, the control, it's all there. He recounted an incident where Diddy and Kim were heard arguing ferociously on a yacht, culminating in Kim sustaining a broken nose. Diddy couldn't let her be seen like that. So, he allegedly flew in a plastic surgeon from Geneva to secretly tend to her injuries, keeping the F.A. Adi intact. This echoes the narrative in Cassie's lawsuit, hinting at a cyclical pattern of abuse. Kim's struggle was Cassie's struggle. Their stories are intertwined, a haunting echo of Diddy's dark influence. The internet once buzzed with glimpses of Kim's bandaged face, now scrubbed clean from the digital world a testament to Diddy's reach and control. Kim, under his sway and with three children to consider, remained tight-lipped about the true nature of her injury. She claimed it was just an accident, a clumsy bump against the table. But those in the know, they saw the truth behind her guarded eyes. Rumors swirled about Kim planning a tell-all book, a revelation that could have decimated Diddy's empire, but it never saw the light of day. Her untimely death, her silenced voice, might have been more than just coincidence, some speculate. Beyond the women in his life, Diddy's alleged secrets extend to clandestine encounters with men, a topic previously shrouded in silence. However, Cassie's lawsuit has emboldened others, like Columbus Short, to speak out. 
Short recounted a bizarre late-night call from Diddy, an invitation laced with unspoken intentions. Even Cat Williams, a comedic genius in his own right, alluded to rejecting lucrative offers to preserve his integrity from Diddy's advances. For times I said no, all to keep my self-respect intact, Cat disclosed. These revelations paint a troubling portrait of Diddy, a mogul whose influence and power have been used to manipulate and control. Wendy Williams, once a rising star at Hot 97, felt the sting of Diddy's wrath firsthand. After threatening to expose a compromising photo of Diddy, she was unceremoniously ousted from the station. Diddy doesn't forget, and he doesn't forgive. Cross him, and you pay the price, an insider revealed. In the shadows of Diddy's towering empire, stories of manipulation, abuse, and silenced voices continue to emerge, painting a grim picture of a man who wielded his power without regard for the destruction left in his wake. The true extent of his actions and their impact on those who dare to enter his orbit remains a tale only partially told, shrouded in mystery, fear, and the passage of time. High above the radio station, onlookers peered down, fueling the suspense, eagerly anticipating a showdown. Fortunately, Wendy's then-boyfriend intervened, averting a potential disaster. But this begs the question, why target a radio host like Wendy Williams? There are a couple of theories floating around. One has it that Misa Hilton, the mother of Diddy's son Justin Combs, was at the station with their infant son and, coincidentally, with Diddy's arch-nemesis, Suge Knight. Word on the street was that Diddy was incensed at the thought of his son and foe in such close proximity. To make matters worse, rumors circulated that Wendy captured a moment of Suge interacting with Justin, a snapshot she threatened to unleash to the world. This, supposedly, prompted Diddy to take drastic, gangster-style action. However, another theory paints a different picture. This one involves Wendy getting her hands on a photo far more scandalous one capturing Diddy in an intimate moment with another man during a trip to Cancun. In the snapshot, someone is seen yanking down Diddy's shorts, a potentially career-damaging image. Wendy may have escaped physical harm, as Diddy might have intended, but her career took a hit when she was fired from the station. This story gains credibility from Jean Deal, who confirmed it during an interview with The Art of Dialogue. There was Diddy, exposed and vulnerable, all because of a mischievous tug at his shorts. That picture, once it reached Wendy, spelled trouble, he recounted. The tale doesn't end there. Jean also divulged an eyebrow-raising episode involving Diddy and Ja Rule in a hotel room. Stationed outside the suite, Jean was unaware of the happenings inside until Ja Rule's cousin showed up. I'm here for Ja, the cousin declared, only to be told he was busy with Diddy. What transpired next led to an awkward encounter, with Diddy and Ja Rule, both draped in towels, emerging in a hurry. There was a commotion, and next thing, they're scrambling out, clutching at their towels. It leaves one to wonder what exactly was going on in there. In an era where the hip-hop world grapples with its own demons, including homophobia, Diddy's alleged secrecy about his sexual orientation isn't surprising. Back in the 90s, coming out could have been catastrophic for his street cred. Yet, the issue at hand isn't Diddy's personal life, but his alleged predatory behavior, promising young artists the world only to exploit them, it's a test, as they say, a way to break in the newbies. Lure them with promises, then reveal the true nature of the meeting by the tub. Diddy's list of alleged victims seems to be ever-growing, a fact not lost on 50 Cent, who's determined to shed light on these stories. Reports suggest that 50 is working on a documentary focusing on the allegations against Diddy, intending to donate the proceeds to the victims. This project, confirmed by G-Unit Film and Television, was announced by 50 on his Instagram, signaling a bold move to confront Diddy head-on. The ongoing feud between 50 and Diddy has now escalated beyond mere industry rivalry. With allegations piling up, Diddy's empire faces a significant threat, potentially crumbling under the weight of these claims. 50's documentary could very well be the final blow, the definitive expose that brings Diddy's reign to an end. Time alone will tell if Diddy's legacy can endure this storm or if it will. Succumb to the overwhelming tide of controversy and scandal that now engulfs it. As the hip-hop world watches and waits, the unfolding saga continues to captivate and unsettle. Will Diddy's empire withstand this onslaught, or is this the beginning of an irreversible downfall? 
In a story where truth intertwines with rumors and secrets linger in the shadows, only time will reveal the final chapter of this tumultuous narrative. Until then, the streets whisper, the fans speculate, and the industry holds its breath, awaiting the outcome of one of hip-hop's most contentious and revealing confrontations. Stay tuned, stay informed, and above all, stay unflinchingly true to the unfolding story of power, betrayal, and the relentless pursuit of truth in the complex world of fame and fortune. That concludes the rewriting of your script. If there's anything else you need, feel free to ask.